All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and the Washington Commanders are making some moves. Now, these moves aren't as bright and not as exciting as what the Cowboys are doing, trading for Stephon Gilmore for a fifth-round compensatory pick. The Giants trading a third for Darren Waller. Shouts out to him, too, because he's from Atlanta, so it's going to be really hard for me to not root for him while he's on the Giants. Always been a big Darren Waller fan. And then the Eagles making sure that they re-sign James Bradbury. But re-signing-wise, I feel like we've made an even bigger splash than them with the Deron Payne thing, so I'm not really worried about them and they're losing a lot of talent but again the commanders haven't done anything as exciting yet made quite a few solid signings but we haven't done any splash things or trades or stuff like that but today wanted to update y'all on the fact that the washington commanders have cut running back jd mckissick and i mean it's just such a sad story because he was almost with the bills and then at the very last second it's almost like he betrayed the bills because he almost put pen to paper and ended up coming back to sign with us for the exact same amount of money then he got hurt with the neck injury again and even before then he was barely getting played that much anyway with brian robinson coming to town antonio gibson fighting to keep his spot in the rotation and so it's just a sad story we got to dive into this whole jd mckissick situation how much cap space do we save and why did we make this move also we fired our offensive lines coach john moscow we got to talk about why and who are some potential replacements and was he a good offensive lines coach did this make sense to move on from him and then lastly the washington commanders also offered all pro special teamer jeremy reeves a qualifying tender he's a restricted free agent we offered him basically a restricted free agent contract and there are hopes that we can sign him long term and I want to compare his potential contract to another great special teamer that got paid by another team this offseason to kind of get a look at what Jeremy Reeves' contract may end up being. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, make sure you pull up every Sunday for the call in live stream. Make sure you be on the lookout for any random live stream if any major news happens as well. Because I just randomly live streamed yesterday for like 45 minutes because of all of the signings that we made if we do anything crazy and chaotic again i will just do a random impromptu live stream out of nowhere so make sure you stay tuned make sure you have that bell next to the subscription button hidden so you get a notification when i come out of nowhere with these live streams and make sure you stay tuned for more mock drafts everything draft everything free agency anything that the commanders do i got y'all updated and without further ado let's get it All right, so first of all, the Washington Commanders officially announced that we've tendered a qualifying offer to restricted free agent Jeremy Reeves. Additionally, we've released J.D. McKissick, and I feel like between those two headlines, the J.D. McKissick one is a bigger one, so I want to talk about that first. J.D. McKissick was officially released with a failed physical designation. Again, those neck injuries are serious. I've been saying it for a while now. I don't think J.D. McKissick will ever play football for the Commanders again. I already knew he was pretty much destined to be released, so this is not surprising at all but i also hope just from human to human that he doesn't attempt to play football again two neck injuries usually people stop after one but now he's had two i think it's time to call it a wrap man and i wish it didn't have to end this way because i still feel like we kind of need you i feel like the reason that we're so heavily interested in austin eckler is because we are losing a specific skill set in jd mckissick when he's cut or when he's hurt that we kind of missed last year i mean antonio gibson and curtis samuel are both like hybrid running back wide receivers but as like a pure pass catching third down back that's really good at pass blocking arguably our best pass blocking running back on the entire team not having that matters and so it's going to be pretty hard moving forward without them now there are some draft options but i wouldn't take any of those guys before the fifth round and again we are interested in austin eckler potentially trading for him and the charges officially today have given them permission to seek a trade but first of all i don't think that's very realistic and it's gonna happen and then without austin eckler and i did a whole video breaking down why and why we should not trade for him and what it would cost to get him cap space trade value all of that type of stuff but without getting austin eckler because again i'm assuming that we won't it will be a hole in the roster without jd mckissick so i am sad about that but we do ultimately save $1.23 million worth of cap space from releasing them. But again, it was never about the cap space because that's pennies. 
in savings right there we're not going to be able to do much with that anyway it's purely just because it's no reason to expect him to play any football moving forward i hope another team doesn't even try to offer him one i don't even want him to be tempted i just want him to stay healthy and alive man for real and then also like i mentioned earlier the commanders offered all pro special teamer jeremy reeves our only all pro player last year we had a few pro bowlers including him but he was our only all pro tendered a qualifying offer and john com said that the commanders would like to sign jeremy reeves to a multi-year deal so it's probably only like a matter of time type of thing and again like i alluded to earlier the saints signed their special teams captain jt gray to a three-year deal that includes a 2.4 million dollar signing bonus and a total value of 9.6 million over those three years this offseason literally like four days ago before free agency started before the tampering period started again technically free agency and the new league year doesn't start until tomorrow as in wednesday but they went ahead and got that out the way so technically going by all pros and things like that jeremy reeves is even better than him now do i think we're going to end up giving jeremy reeves a three-year almost 10 million dollar deal or better no i don't think so but just to show you what special teams players are going for nowadays and now moving on breaking news the washington commanders have moved on from john moscow our offensive lines coach for the past few years and it's worded as moving on from and not necessarily fired or let go i feel like out of respect but i do feel like they are moving on from him with a purpose and this is really interesting because ron rivera has fired a Panthers coach. I mean, his new offensive coordinator, he has no history with him. Jack DeRio, the only history they had was playing linebacker together for the Bears. He fired Sam Mills III, who he was extremely loyal to for a while, maybe for too long. And it just seems like Ron Rivera is doing everything he's got to do to not only win, but to also keep his job. And if it means cutting loose with a lot of Washington Commanders, players and coaches, then that's what he's willing to do at this point. He is not playing anymore. He just wants the best of the best. He's not just relying on familiar faces. He wants who gives him the best opportunity to win and again, keep his job. So sadly, John Moscow ends up getting cut. He is not playing. He's basically auditioning for this new potential owner that's coming in. Like, hey, look, I'm willing to compromise. I'm willing to cut people I'm loyal to if that means it's a better move for the team overall. But man, John Moscow has been with Ron Rivera since the Panthers. He hired him in Carolina all the way back in 2011 and he followed him to Washington in 2020. And I feel so sorry for John Moscow because last year, he was asked to replace Brandon Sheriff and Eric Flowers with Andrew Norwell and Trey Turner, both surprisingly former Panthers players as well. It is just like, man, how much is John Moscow's fault really? Because I feel like up until last year, we all felt like at least the majority of us and especially me felt like he was getting more out of the offensive line than he should have. I mean, Eric Flowers was kind of let go. Like, I mean, the Dolphins just didn't care about him. He was discarded. And when Chase Willier was healthy, he was balling out looking like a top five center and even any backup we threw out there Tyler Larson or Wes Schweitzer will go out there and ball out remember Wes Schweitzer we got him for extremely cheap after the Falcons let him go and the Falcons had a bad old line and they felt like they had the right to release Wes Schweitzer and to get what we got out of Wes Schweitzer in the 2021 season from a guy that got cut from an offensive line that bad of the Falcons just is enough for John Moscow to put that on his resume and then Charles Leno discarded by the Chicago Bears as well with how good he looked the 2021 season samuel cosme as a rookie how good he looked the 2021 season i'm not exactly sure what happened in the 2022 season as far as those guys go charles leno and samuel cosme but everything else injuries and then again trying to replace eric flowers and brandon sheriff with trey turner and andrew norwell that's almost an impossible task right there so i don't blame john moscow for really anything but apparently the commanders are ready to move on and the timing of this move is really weird because like why not let him go as soon as you hire Eric Bieniemy, so that we could have already had an offensive line coach replacement in the building already before we got into free agency you've already signed two offensive linemen and then after that you fire your offensive lines coach I mean at least it's before the draft but that's a low standard he should have been fired let go moved on from however you want to word it before free agency even started before we even brought in Andrew Wiley and Nick Gates and made any offensive line decisions so it's really weird I don't think it's going to be detrimental to the team but it's very weird timing because I do feel like Moscow probably has some input on the fact that we signed these guys and a lot of the offensive linemen remember in the combine and, and throughout this offseason up to this point we've talked 
talk to like 25 offensive linemen, both formally and informally, for this upcoming draft as far as 2023 prospects go. And I'm pretty sure he was involved in a lot of those meetings, probably even physically present there to talk to those offensive linemen. And it's just weird to have him go through all of that and then to cut him in the middle of free agency right when everything's kicking off. That's just really weird timing. I would have preferred for our new offensive lines coach to already be there talking to a lot of these draft prospects, having input on who we sign in free agency. But maybe we'll just promote somebody from within. Maybe Eric Bieniemy has somebody in mind because Eric Bieniemy wise, if he wants to pull a coach from the Chiefs, former Washington Redskins, interesting connection there, offensive lineman Andy Heck is currently the offensive lines coach for the Chiefs. Maybe he brings him over to the commanders or also the assistant offensive lines coach for the Chiefs, Corey Matthew. Maybe Eric Bieniemy wants him. He's been their assistant offensive lines coach for the past five years. Maybe Eric Bieniemy brings him over and the chiefing up this staff a little bit. Make it less Washington Commanders and more Washington Kachiefs? I don't know, man. I ain't got nothing for that one. <laughs> I tried, though. And it's really interesting, too, because it's being reported by Nikki Javala from a while ago that people with close knowledge to the team's plan said that John Moscow may even retire. So I'm just confused as to why he ended up having to be let go when he already may have planned on retiring anyway. And if he were going to retire, why didn't he retire as soon as we hired Eric Bieniemy? Maybe even before that, as soon as this season ended. And again, the Commanders have not not named the replacement office of Lions coach yet so we don't even know who the guy's gonna be maybe they don't even know I mean we have Travell Wharton who's our assistant offensive lines coach we may want to look at him he's been an assistant for the Carolina Panthers and the Washington Commanders since 2018 so he hasn't been with Rivera as long as John Moscow has been but he came over from the Carolina Panthers to Washington with Ron Rivera he's been working with Ron Rivera for like the past five years four or five years also maybe JP Finlay brings up a good point maybe Juan Castillo who coached the tight ends last season but coached O-line for years under another interesting connection Andy Reid maybe he steps up and becomes our offensive line coach and then we got to find a tight ends coach who knows maybe he does both I doubt it but it's really interesting that Juan Castillo does have that Andy Reid connection it was an offensive lines coach for him for years and then came over here to be a tight ends coach maybe that will be who ends up replacing him so we have options within our current tight ends coach our current assistant offensive lines coach and then maybe the two offensive line coaches for the Chiefs currently or maybe there's somebody outside that's just wandering around that we may bring in who knows but it's really interesting that we made this move when we did and not only did we make this move during free agency during the height of it after we've already signed two offensive linemen and after we've already interviewed and talked to and looked at like 25 plus offensive line prospects for this upcoming 2023 NFL draft but we also don't have an immediate replacement normally when something like this happens it's like oh, okay we fired this guy so we could bring this guy in but it looks like the commanders are not even sure who they want to bring in to replace that guy if we're going to promote from within if we're going to bring somebody over from the chiefs or again hire somebody from the outside who knows right now man we literally have no idea but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video how do you feel about jd mckissick getting cut how do you feel about us trying to sign all pro jeremy reeves potentially long term and how do you feel about this whole john moscow situation and the timing of it and just who we could end up you bringing in to replace them or promoting to replace them and of course man i appreciate all the support man shout out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors name is scrolling on the screen right now please leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learned anything and as always i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out